Hello everyone and welcome to another of my Stargate team 3D printed projects. This time, as you can see, we will take a look at Apophis Mothership. Uh, this is the ship that unfortunately was only in three episodes. Uh, Serpents of Venom, Exodus and Enemies, where it unfortunately was destroyed by self-destruct. This is uh, one of the first super ships and uh, in my opinion it's the one of the best looking one. The other one is of course the Anubis uh, Super Hatak, but I never really really liked the design. But I really like this one and this is why I decided to actually uh, design the model and print it out. The original goal was to actually make it in the same scale as my Hatak and Keops class, um, but unfortunately that wasn't really that uh, feasible, because uh, in the series at least uh, the ship was really giant uh, next to a Hatak class. And I wanted it to uh, actually put it between my two uh, existing ships in my vitrine. So I decided to make a scale that is uh, not in the series, but uh, at least in our game. Now, this ship has one, well, unique feature, I guess. And uh, that's the fact that those extrusions, those spylons, uh, that they can actually be folded. And uh, in the episode Serpent's Venom, uh, Anu, uh, Apophis actually did that in order to escape the, uh, the, the mines after he blew up Heru-Ur and his attack. Uh, attack sorry. So uh, my goal was to actually design the model in such a way that those uh, uh, pylons would be indeed movable and could retract in the same manner. So I think that I bored you long enough and uh, that's why I think we should go back in Creo to take a look at the model itself. And voila, here it is. On the first glance uh, the design is very similar, at least uh, the assembly of the model is very similar to uh, my design of Hatak. And why not? The model is actual, in a way, Hatak 2.0. Uh, sure, the proportions are different, but the overall design is very similar to Hatak. So I decided to use the same uh, approach I used with Hatak, but um, to make uh, accommodation for the mo moving of those pylons. Now, if I use my dragger, you can see that it can move just like I want it. Sure, here all the pylons move at the same time, just like in the series, but uh, in the real life, uh, real life uh, on the real model, that won't be the case, they are not connected in any way and I have to manually move every single one of them in order to actually make some mechanism to uh, connect those pylons uh, the ship would have to be much bigger so how uh, does it actually work? well we have uh, the middle main body and the weapon platform around that If you see here we have a pin and here we have a pin all around and this part simply plug in they have its hole and it's done like that basically every time the same for uh, the golden pylons yeah here we have a pin and they have a corresponding hole so they can click together and the entire model is done in this manner, uh, with the goal, once again, of having uh, no glue. But uh, there may be exception here with this antenna. They are kind of small, and uh, 
I guess that it would be better to actually apply glue here simply for the reason that they are so small and they may not hold very well on their own. Oh, this part actually is held once again via pins, as you can see, and the same goes for the lower part of well, the weapon platform. Here you can see that we have pin that serve as a pivot point for those um, platforms, and here we have a pin that goes through both of these parts and into the upper part and, as you can see, into the lower part and thus everything clicks together. Uh, here we have also uh, the, the stopper um, which is clicked into the into this rectangular hole and that uh, prevents the pylon to actually move behind this desired position. So as you can see, design-wise, uh, I uh, kept it rather simplistic. Uh, once again, it's uh, made of uh, the, the main body is made of several pieces. Uh, they are made. They are connected well, just like before, or just like with the every other every other part. With the Lego style approach, as you can see here, we have this rectangle pins and this uh, cylinder one and in the corresponding part we have the corresponding holes and when it comes to the model that's basically it one thing that I had to kind of invent was the landing platform I did not want to use another well, another temple that is that is uh, well just like the one for for the Kelps class, the pyramid with the temple, and the second one that I made for the Hatak. I wanted to make something different, so I made made a little experiment uh, and came up with this thing. It's my complete invention. It's not based on anything that was in the series, but it's different than others, and I kind of, kind of like it. So this is well, more like a pedestal than than actual landing platform. But I know it's simplistic. I, it's nothing, nothing uh, very fancy, but it's uh, something that. Um, the ship can actually rest on. Uh, this is the default grey color. I don't intend it to be grey. Actually, I am not uh, yet convinced what color I will use eventually. I was playing with the idea that I may use a copper, copper brown, and uh, to to make it stand out. So I think that I will use that color, though I am not convinced yet. It's not 100%. Anyway, this is this is my invented landing platform. So it would basically look like that. Okay, so this is the model. So let's print it out and assemble it together. And here we are. And these are all the parts of the model. Uh, they are individual parts, uh, with one exception, um, but I will get to this later. Um, there is actually one little issue, <coughs> and that is with this and this part. Uh, as you can see, I managed to actually broke off the pin, and the pin is actually here, because I am a moron. So, uh, for now, I will leave it like that, and I will try to assemble it anyway. But, if this uh, isn't supported um, sufficiently, I will simply glue it in, because I don't really want to print both of these parts anew. 
OK, so we will start with the assembly. So first, we will actually do the antenna holders. So we have these two pieces, two little pins, and two pairs of actually actual antennas. So I will simply take the pin and put it through on both ends. Now I will take the other side and click it together and push the pin more or less into center. And now when it is together, I will take the antennas and put them inside. And that's it. And we will do it three times. Now, unfortunately, on this one, the antennas don't really hold that well, so I think I will use some glue to secure it a little better. Okay, those are the antenna holders. And now we can start with the assembling of different parts. So, for example, this part. I know that we can already attach the upper golden pylons and the upper part of the pyramid. So, let's do that. And it is done. Now, for the lower part, I can do the same with the lower pylons. Okay. What I can also do is to add those pins inside. Okay, so now all six pins are inside. Okay, so this is it. Now we will leave the main body and uh, focus on the weapon platform. So, I will connect first the bottom part. Those little pieces with a rectangular pin will come into this rectangular hole. Okay, like that. Okay, so now it is attached and I will now attach the pin for the moving parts. Okay, so now the pins are there. So we can take these. And 
one and two. And we have to attach the upper and we have to do the same thing for the other three pylons. Okay, now we have all three and then we will attach it to the bottom. this Okay, it is attached and now because it is attached I can already add this part here. Okay, it's clicked together. I have kind of problem already to maneuver with it. I have to say that this ship is bigger than I expected. Okay, now we will add the upper part. Now the last piece. I had to use uh, force. Yeah. It had to be pushed really hard. And here we have the Apophis mothership in all its glory. I know I say it a lot, but I cannot help myself. I really love it. I'm so, so happy how it turned out. And even as you can see, the pylon moved exactly as intended. So now Apophis can run away from the minefield. Okay, the only thing I will do uh, is to probably glue all the antennas into the holder just to be sure because they are small and I really would, wouldn't uh, want to lose them and I will uh, probably glue that broken part uh, on, on uh, one of the, of the platform pieces. I don't remember which it is now, but it doesn't matter. I will take a look but overall this is it this is the Apophis mothership the bad thing about this model is that I was hoping that I will put it between my Kelps class and Hatak class 
unfortunately uh, looking at this right now I am 100% sure that it will not fit into my vitrine so um, <coughs> I will have to think of something and yeah it's really shame I really wanted to do it like that but what can you do buy a bigger vitrine okay oh and we can take a look from the bottom yeah that's it so this is it okay and here we have the well I would say pedestal it's no longer a um, temple or anything like that as you can see uh, I uh, eventually decided for the copper color uh, it's really nothing fancy it's really not that interesting I even uh, printed it uh, in uh, only 5% infill which is extremely uh, light and well it's not as best as I would hope however for the purpose it will serve I think it's very sufficient uh, uh, and the ship will simply sit on it like this so yeah it's not the most interesting thing but well I guess it's okay it's it's sufficient okay so that is basically it However, before you go, uh, I have one more thing for you. That's basically this comparison of all three ships that I currently have in my, well, go-out fleet. You can see a Hatak, Apophis Mothership and a Kelps class pyramid ship. They really look nice together. Unfortunately, I cannot have uh, displayed like this in my vitrine because they simply won't. Well, these uh, little bastard won't fit there. So I already figured out what to do with it. And well, it won't be in the vitrine, but above it. Anyway, that is it. Um, that's all for now. Have a very, very nice day and bye bye.